Conference on Female Reproduction. Here we see uh, the reproductive organs of the female. We see the ovary, the uterus, fallopian tube going through the from around the ovary over into the uterus. There's urinary bladder. There's other ovary here, uh, and other components of the female reproductive tract. Of course, are the mammary glands uh, necessary to nourish the young. Uh, in terms of a test that we'll be using today is one is encephalation. Use a manometer to measure the pressure um, uh, in a uh, in a pressure uh, inside the um, female reproductive tract. Um, and if there's a, a lot of pressure, there is an impedance of flow through the fallopian tube. Uh, in, um, installation of radioactive tracer is another way that you could uh, do the follow to see if there's a, a patent overduct. And then uh, also you, you can inject dye and look for it uh, at the end with surgery. That's a more invasive way. But these are ways to look at problems associated with the fallopian tube actually being open patent. Uh, also, another problem is endometriosis, which is the the growing of the endometrium uh, outside of the area that it should be. And then another problem with the female reproductive tract is the cervix. And uh, to look at cervical mucus, it's been bar type, is elasticity uh, of the uh, of the cervical mucus, you can um, actually stretch uh, cervical mucus to be able to see um, if it's pliable and typical of what it should be. Uh, also, uh, the ferning pattern, if you take cervical mucus and put it on a slide uh, and it uh, has had the proper change due to uh, hormonal influences, then uh, it will uh, would dry in a ferning pattern. And then uh, if uh, the cervix uh, can't be, probably can't be overcome, there's always in vitro uh, fertilization that can uh, can occur. You can slip a pipette through the cervix and, and inseminate uh, the, the, the uterus. So here we see the different parts of the female reproductive tract, the ovaries, uh, fallopian tube, uterus, cervix, uh, and the vagina, and of course uh, the ovary is the one that produces the gametes uh, and also produces hormones that uh, estrogen and progesterone that, that regulates the growth and secretion of the, of the uterus in preparation for the offspring. So we see the different parts. We you see the uh, ovary here, there's an ovary there and there and there. And uh, the fembrilla, you can see the little finger-like projections, the fem fembrilla, which um, surround the ovary and coats. Uh, they have ciliated cells and they coats the egg uh, to go uh, into the um, infidibulum and finally into the fallopian tube uh, to occur. So here we see the endometrium, myometrium, perimetrium, cervix, uh, and vagina that we'll be talking about. So the, the fimbria, uh, little finger-like projections, uh, they uh, move uh, and they facilitate the egg going in through there. And you can foresee if there was somehow a problem that they're stuck down and they can't move, then they would uh, impede their, their value of taking the egg in. And then also, uh, you have ciliated cells in the oviduct itself all along the way through there, fallopian tube, uh, uh, where uh, uh, the cells need to be ciliated to be able to move the eggs uh, along and also the sp uh, sperm along. Um, here we can see uh, the epithelium, nice epithelium on the surface here, and connective tissue. We can see uh, lymphatics uh, in through there that help um, there's another one there that help keep these things somewhat rigid and, and suspended um, uh, in the oviduct. 
here we can see them again uh, nice uh, projections there with uh, and you here you can see little ciliated cells uh, on there there's mucus and ciliated cells you see blood vessels but also a nice lymphatics running through there uh, as well as you get closer to the uterus you become more a muscle layer but you still have these ciliated cells in there when you get to the uterus this is a myometrium and the endometrium uh, and the uh, endometrium so that's a parametrium we don't have myometrium uh, muscle uh, and the endometrium you have a, a basal layer uh, and you have a functional layer and this is the layer uh, that changes with uh, the different cycle and also it's a basal layer that has spiraling arteries that then um, project up in this area uh, whenever it's um, need nourishment or they also um, will cause ischemia whenever they retract back into the basal layer. Um, and so here we can see these again, uh, the basal layer versus the functional layer. The functional layer is what sloughs off or is actually the, the part that has uh, um, the uh, secretions uh, ready to nourish the egg or the zygote that's coming in through the morula at that point in time, I guess. And then from there, from the uterus, you go to the cervix. In the cervix, you have cervical mucus that's secreted or cervical glands in there that secrete the mucus in the center. Outside, uh, on the outside, cervical os out through there, you have stratified squamous epithelium, but you have simple columnar epithelium uh, inside the cervix. So you can see epithelium inside the cervix, you can see cervical mucus, Again, you can see the cells, simple columnar epithelium that, that secretes uh, uh, fluid. These are not ciliated cells, these are just secretory cells. And you can see them again with the cervical mucus going through there and little projections in through here to, um, that come through. And then finally you get cervical mucus to the outside and here you get stratified squamous epithelium uh, characteristic uh, of, the, of the vagina. And in the vagina, you have stratified squamous epithelium, but one thing you don't have is mucous glands. So you don't have any glands in through here, so the fluid associated with lubrication of the vagina is dependent upon uh, exudate from blood vessels. So you get edema, come out, uh, fluid uh, leak out, and that fluid is what lubricates the vagina. Um, and we have stem cells, of course, along the epithelium bottom and through there, which uh, they connect to the connective tissue below. Uh, it's a prickle cell layer, typical, non-cratinized, uh, stratified squamous epithelium, kind of like uh, skin on the outside. So this particular conference was talking about infertility in the female, and it asked uh, what are some of the basic functions of the female reproductive tract, and then... Um, it asks about how infection may impede uh, the function of uh, the ovidug, uh, and then also uh, endometriosis, uh, how that might uh, also impede uh, the function of the fimbria and the ovidug. Uh, the next part has to do with cervix, uh, and it asks you some things. What does the cervix do? Uh, how does the cervix uh, cope with the paradox of the function of not letting anything through and then all of a sudden let sperm through um, and also how the ovarian cycle influences cervical mucus and what are some of the problems that could be happen with the cervix and then also how you might be able to uh, overcome those.